How are my kids? <laughs> good. Did you have a good week? Good. And there's the girls. Yay. How are you? Hi. Great. Oh, I'm so glad you guys made it today. I think we just have Kian and <laughs> his brother. And so, hello, everybody. Oh, yes. Hi. Hi. April and Theo, can you put yours on mute, please? Yeah. Thank you. Makes it a little quieter for everybody. So did you girls, were you able to, oh, Lily is in. Oh, good. I was afraid Lily was going to make it except for the recording. Yay, Lily. <laughs> um, did you girls get to watch the drawing video? Not yet? OK. So that's recorded, and I sent your mom the link um, an email. So have her check email at some point. Maybe you can do it this weekend. That'll be a fun Hi. hour. Um, and then let's see. I think we just have the two boys to come in here. And we just we practiced um, in drawing class. We practiced drawing different kinds of trees because that seems to be Bob Ross's specialty, his happy little trees, right? So um, today we're going to paint those happy little trees. And um, your painting is being, going to be a little bit brighter and nice, vibrant colors because of the colors I gave you. So go ahead and get your paints out if you haven't. And if you don't have your cup of rinse water, get that and your paper towel. Um, and I forgot to remind everybody in um, drawing class about taping or gluing on your photo of this painting onto that three by five card that was in your kit. Um, and then on the back with the lines, go ahead and you can write the information, the name of the painting. Um, and now I'm forgetting the name of the painting. Oh my gosh, what was it? A winter sky? <laughs> no, I will look that up for you and I will put it in the email when I um, send your folks the link for the YouTube of the recording of this. Um, yes, Lily. Look what I have. Aww. Is that it a little? My, it was from one of my school things. I made a cake. Aww. Oh, so cute. Oh, very cute. Well, I'm glad to see that you're back home safe. Um, where are those boys? Well, maybe we'll just get started here. Um, so yeah, on the three by or the four by six card on the lines, um, have you write we um we write the artist name and the title of the painting, which I'll have to get back to you on that. Maybe I'll look it up at the end of class. And um, any other information about it. So you can keep these all together and on a ring or something, um, or even string or something, yarn. And you can keep them together to know which um, artist that you study. So, oh, there they are. All right, welcome guys. And his brother will probably be painting with him. So we'll get started. So today we're going to start with the background, which we often do um, in my classes. We're going to start with that sun. Do you think it's a sunset or a sunrise? I'm not really sure. It could be either, couldn't it? Yeah, it's pretty. I do love sunsets and sunrises, but I'm never up for sunrise. It's too early for me. So we're going to start with the sun. We're going to create a circle. Do you see the shortest trees in the background. This is kind of along our horizon line. I gave you a one solid line kind of across. That is our horizon line. And you see the shortest trees? Do you see in his painting? Well, this is my painting. I painted with um, 
um, Mrs. Ramirez, and we did a, a little paint party together with my daughter. And so this is my rendition of Bob, Bob Ross's painting. So what he had us do is start with that sun. We're going to paint the sun in a circle right in this space. We're going to give a little bit of space above these two short trees, but right about here, we're going to create a circle shape sun. And then we're also going to bring that yellow down directly below okay into where the lake is yes lily go ahead and unmute what paintbrush do you use so have both of your paintbrushes out we are going to well i don't i forgot which ones you get me so i got all of them you have all of them okay so let's um let's use let's use the round one for now but when we move on to purple in a little bit, we'll use our flat brush, okay? This one's a little bit different, but this is my favorite flat brush. So I'm gonna use my favorite. You use your favorite flat brush that you have. So we're going to start with a yellow. Is my music too loud? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. I can hear you perfect. Oh, okay, good. Sometimes it's hard to tell if my music is too loud in I love painting to music. Does anybody else like quiet music when they're doing kind of quiet work? Me too. All right, so I'm dipping into my yellow. Get my paper towel handy here. I hope it's bright enough. I have an extra light on the project, so I hope it's a little brighter. So right in the middle, we're gonna start and make a circle shape right in between these trees. You can even go over top of some of these trees here that I gave you the lines for. And let's just create a circle right here. And it does not have to be perfectly edged because we're going to blend in some red and we'll create a little bit of orange. So just get that circle shape in, okay? And got your circle and then I'm going to just real, we call this loose painting. I'm just going to throw it directly below from that horizon line that's right here. Or I'm going to go with my brush kind of flat. I'm just going to go back and forth. Down to almost the bottom, not quite the bottom. Okay, this is creating a reflection on the water because this is a lake we're looking at. So I'm going to go right about to there. Okay. I'm going to cover that canvas pretty well. So you almost have a triangle shape. It does not have to be perfect. It can even kind of come out a little bit. Let's even pull some of that extra paint that we have on that reflection. And let's just pull it out a little bit because we want some of this, um, we want the colors to blend. Because in that sunset, we're gonna, we don't have orange, do we? We have red. We're gonna create some orange. And this is gonna kind of, I'm gonna pull some of this yellow right over to the land. Oh, there's Zach. That's right, Zach. Zach and Ken. I forgot Zach's name. <laughs> Welcome, guys. We are just starting. And we're starting with the sun. We're gonna make the sunset. And the sunset reflection will go directly from that horizon line down to a point almost to the bottom of the canvas. Okay, Zach and Kian. All right, and then we're bringing some of that yellow out so we can blend it with a little bit of red and a little bit of purple. There you both are. Hey, good morning. All right, and then I'm gonna do go back to that sun. I'm going to bring some of that yellow out a little bit. I'm just really lightly. Let's just kind of brush in a little bit more yellow, but real thin, really light this time. Okay. We want to have the sun radiating out and we are going to cover up a little bit of the trees because black and purple are a lot darker than yellow, aren't they? So we are bringing this out 
to bring up just a little bit of yellow into the sky. And this is going to end up being behind our trees. So you should still be able to see the trees, the lines of the trees, all right? So just kind of a little bit of sun radiating out, little sun reflecting away from the main reflection in the middle here. Perfect. All right, now you don't even have to rinse. So I'm going to, I'm gonna put a little, let me put it right in my camera here. I'm gonna get a little of this red I'm going to just scoop a little bit and put it in the lid of my red, okay? Because we don't want to contaminate or dirty up our red. Yes, Lily, go ahead and unmute. Do we have to use the same brush? Yes, yep, keep using the same brush. When we do the purple, we'll skip, uh, switch over to the flat brush because we have a lot more canvas to cover with the purple. So yeah. I'm going to... I'm going to pour a little bit of the yellow on the red, just a little bit, because I don't want to stick my red brush unless you rinse. I just want to pour a little bit so we can mix our colors because it's good practice in mixing colors here. So in that cap, the top of your red, I'm mixing a little bit of red and more yellow. Okay. It's almost a salmon-y, peachy color, but that's okay. We just want to get a little bit of this and then we're going to go continue with red. So mixing, mixing your own shade of orange here. Do you guys have a similar color to this? Yep, just pour a little bit. No, that's fine. You make, mix your own shade of orange, okay? So a little bit of red in that cap and a, a little more yellow than red. And then get it all mixed in on your cap here and see if it comes out pretty close to this. It doesn't have to be exact, you make your own shade. Okay, so I'm going to bring that on the outside of where we did the yellow, okay? See how it's nice and bright yellow in the middle, and then it just kind of blends to orange and then red. So we're going to kind of lightly again, it can be a little bit light. I'm going to bring in some orange around our sun, in this pretty sunset. And then we're going to add a little bit more yellow to blend this orange in a moment. Go around like that. And let's, while we have that same orange, let's put it on both sides of our reflection. So just go out. I'm using the flat side of the brush like that. I'm just putting it down and pulling away from the sunset or I'm sorry, the reflection like that. Just a little bit. See, there's just a little bit of orange there and then a little bit on the right side. Let me know if you have questions. We're just adding a little orange because when you mix red, that's gonna be up here and yellow, it creates orange, right? Do you remember when we talked about primary colors? Way back, back in September actually. Our primary colors are red, blue, and yellow, right? When you mix any of those primary colors, you create a secondary color. So I'm just bring a little bit of orange down here, I think. I'm covering up the, the land here that's gonna be purple and white and black. A little bit of land. I'm covering up just a little bit to bring in the orange, all right? Now I'm going to, um, you might want to rinse that a little bit. We won't need much more yellow. So if you have lots of yellow left over, feel free to use it for another project. So I'm going to rinse that off my brush so I can have nice pure yellow. And I'm going to go back on top. While that orange is still wet, we're going to create a little mixture and blend right on the canvas 
another shade of orange with our yellow. See how I'm just kind of blending with the already wet orange, just adding some yellow. All right, I'm gonna actually bring in some more yellow. And when we get done and your yellow isn't real, real bright, you can add another layer of yellow on our sun, okay? It, it'll probably be fine like this though. All right, and then I'm going to bring a little more yellow into the mix with the orange down here. So we have it all nice and blended. Like that. And if you guys want to um, go back and maybe work on it later or fix it, um, I will have it uploaded to YouTube so you guys can check out the recording if you want to play around with it and spend a little more time. You can. All righty. Let's see. So we've got the sun, we've got some orange. Now we're going to add some red. The red is going to blend in to the orange and then the purple in the moment will blend into the red. So let's, I think that's a big enough area. Let's rinse our round brush or whatever brush you're using when we switch over to red. That will be covering more area. So that's a good reason to use a bigger brush, okay? So I'm just gonna dab into my red a little bit and we're going to create a circle. Actually, we're gonna connect this red right down to the red down here. We're gonna go right over these trees, okay? You still should be able to see the lines for the trees. And we'll be creating the trees on top of this sunset, okay? Teacher? Yes. Yes, Are we, we going to go on the flat brush? Yes, yep. You can use your flat brush for this one because there's a lot of space to cover. And it's a bigger brush, isn't it? Flat brush is wider, so it covers more canvas. So I'm just kind of dab around here. I'm just putting it, I'm not putting it in really, really dark. I'm just kind of getting a nice thin coat of the red. We're going to kind of blend this in with the orange that you put on. And you can see I'm bringing this right down. I'm going right over those trees, but I can still see the lines because I'm not making, putting too much paint on it. Whoops, I dropped my brush. All right, so I'm gonna go out about, let's see, go out to where the birds are. How about we stop right around the birds? Do you see, might be hard to see. Let me hold it up here. My birds are right there, all right? So let's just cover the birds with the red. So that is how far we're going out with the red. In a circular motion, a circle shape because we've got a circle sun and it radiates in a circular direction. And I'm gonna bring that almost to the top of the canvas. I'll leave a little bit of space. We'll put some purple up there. So let's make a giant red ball that almost looks like it's behind their sun. And this is going all the way over. We're trying to keep that sun in the center of our red. Like that. I might even add a little bit of that orange that we mixed. I think I might even add a little bit of that in a moment. So I'm gonna bring the red down here. Of course, you're not gonna see the red, but we wanna, if you can see any red through the trees, once we get trees on, we wanna be able to see that red in the background. Those pretty, the yellow, orange, red, and purple. We wanna see that through the trees because the sky doesn't stop when you're looking through trees, does it? Nope, you can see if there's any space between the tree branches, you can see the sky or whatever is behind. So I'm going to bring this lightly, real light. You're not going to see a lot of this because we're going to cover it up with the trees. But I am. I want the red to be symmetrical. Have you heard that word? Same on both sides, the same width. So I'm going to go over lightly. So the red on this side 
is as wide as the red on that side. And you can kind of see in the picture how it, there's a big area of orange and red, isn't it? So once we get this red in, we're going to add a little bit more orange to blend in with the yeah. red we just put on. Yes. Lovely, beautiful, very good. Good job. All right, so now I'm going to go back with my same brush. I'm not even rinsing. I'm just going to grab some more of that orange that I mixed in my lid here. All right, I'm grabbing some of that orange and I'm going to widen the orange that I put down so it blends in with the red. So we just keep blending, don't we? We keep blending to make the colors go together. And that looks so pretty. So I'm gonna make the orange wider but don't make it too, too thick of paint because you don't want to really lose the shape of your trees, okay? Which doesn't really matter. You can make your own trees just by following along with me. That's fine. So I'm just blending in some orange to make the orange a little bit wider. I'm done. You're all done? Okay. All right. Make sure if you want to go ahead and rinse your brush and then we'll get into the purple. Very nice, very nice. Um, let me see here. So there's less red reflection in the water. So I'm not gonna put any more red down here at all. Um, and I think I'm gonna use up the rest of the, whoops, I dropped it right on my son. I'm gonna use up the rest of the orange that I had mixed with the red and the yellow. And I'm going to just keep adding a little bit more orange to my radiating sun here. All right. My Hi, orange is dry. What's that, honey? My orange is dry. It's oh. dry. Oh, no. That's okay. If you want to mix a little more, you can. If you just want to move on, you can do that, too. All right. So I'm and done with... Orange. I'm going to rinse the red and orange off my brush now. I just swirl, 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 right? You always want to make sure you rinse really well after class. Um, rinse these brushes because this acrylic paint, when it dries, you know how hard it dries. Really crumbly. It can, it'll ruin your brush if you don't get it rinsed. So always rinse actually with soap and water after class, okay? These brushes should last you years. Long, long time. So I got to all out of my bristles. I still have some on the side. There, see? Perfect. All right, now I'm going to go to my purple. And if you want to cover up, put the caps back on so you don't knock over your paint, that might be a good idea. I, I tend to knock over my paint sometimes. So I'm putting my caps back on and I'm opening my purple. How are we for time? Okay, we're good. All right, so with your flat brush again, we're going to dive into the purple. So get that purple out and it's a really pretty purple. I wish I would have used this purple instead of the darker purple that I used in that painting because it's nice and vibrant. And I think Bob would, be, would appreciate a more vibrant purple. <laughs> Okay, so this, again, go make a light coat. Um, we want to try and be able to see those lines of the trees, okay? So real light, you can, it's okay to see the canvas through it, because I think you can kind of, if you look close on the painting that I'm actually looking at this painting, and I can see a little bit of canvas, I just makes, I think it makes it look kind of cool. It's almost like the sky is kind of seeing through there. And I'm going to go directly over on top of the red. Let's bring a little bit of purple across the top. All right, a little bit of purple. So that purple flows all the way across the top of the painting. And then I'm going to, once we get the purple, and purple's going to go all the way over. 
You can even bring it lightly. See how light this is right here? I wanna be able to see a little bit of purple through these trees once we get the tree trunks in with the snow on them. I still wanna see some of this purple. So I'll have a little darker purple, a little heavier on the brush on the corner up here. All right. Another question? Oh, got a snack. Okay, so a little bit darker up here in this corner. Doesn't matter what way your brush strokes go. Right now, let's just get some purple on here. Because I think we'll see through the trees to some of that purple sky. It's really pretty sunset. I'm, I'm gonna call it a sunset. And then this is gonna bring, we're gonna bring this purple right down here, okay? Do you remember that horizon line where the yellow and the orange is from the water, that lake? We're gonna go right to the horizon line, okay? So I'm gonna bring in a little bit more purple here. And then let's bring some purple to the other side if you haven't already. Let me make a little bit darker going across the top of this radiating sun. And then in a moment, we're going to bring some or horizontal lines. Horizontal is going from left to right. That's why we call this a horizon line because it goes left to right. So we're going to bring some horizon, no, horizontal lines of the purple covering some of that red. But let's get this covered in first. We'll save that for last. One, so the top corners are gonna have a little darker paint. Right across the top, I want a little darker purple than down here, because we're gonna see more of that. And there's less trees at the top. And it's a pretty purple, so I wanna carry that purple all the way around. And just like we did on this side, we're just kind of following where we did the red and from that horizon line, I'm bringing it up to go right around the red. Now again, this is gonna be covered in trees. Both sides are gonna be covered in trees, but we'll see a little bit of purple through, I hope. That is my plan. So I'm just going right up to, let's see, I think we can bring purple actually down here. So where you see your trees, let me bring it up close. Where you see the trees, let's bring it right down to cover up those trees, all right? See the little bit of curvy line I hear that I have here is the, um, it's like a little bit of land sticking out in this lake. So we're gonna go right up to this line here. I just wanna get some purple in there because the water is reflecting a lot of the purple sky, especially down here. We'll get to that in a moment. But we're gonna bring the sky down to reflect on the water right here. And I think I'm gonna bring it where these two trees are that make a V shape. We're gonna go right in between there too. Let's get a little purple in there. When we get our sky and our water done, we'll be painting some happy little trees. All right. We'll save the rest of the purple on here in a little bit. So let's go ahead and work on the reflection in the lake here. So a little more purple. And I'm going to, instead of having the red, like we went yellow, orange, red, purple, I'm going to skip the red and we're just gonna go right to purple for the reflection. So right at that horizon line, Let's make a nice purple line and carry that all the way down. So we're going to go over a little bit here, just a little bit. Okay. I didn't make a line where the, that the bushes end here. So just kind of go right to here. All right. Let's just get some purple there. And I'm going right up to the orange. It's gonna go over the orange so it kind of blends in a little bit like that. Can you do it lightly over the edge of the orange? Like that. And straight down. Now we don't wanna, we don't need to bring the purple 
all the way down here. We're going to leave this light, all right? We're going to add white to it when we're done here because it's a wintry sunset and there's a lot of white that's reflecting from the snow. So I'm going to go right about there, okay? So a little purple here and here. And that's bring a little bit of purple on this side. And we'll bring the purple, this whole little section on the bottom corner. Let's make that purple. It's a cool purple I like. Anybody else like purple? One of my favorite colors. In fact, it's my birthstone for February. Okay, let's see. Got some purple in there. Does everybody have enough purple on this side? I think I want to make a little more purple. See this, this squiggly area almost looks like a river. That's a path. That's going to be a snow covered path. All right. So I want to make sure I've got enough purple because there's a lot of purple reflecting in here as well as the shadows. I'm considering this purple on um, with the bushes. I consider those shadows. So let's go ahead and bring some purple through here on the sides. We're gonna put white on top, even a little bit of black in there, but we're gonna, we wanna have the undertone, that's a new word for you, the undertone, we want purple, because we have a lot of purple in this painting. And we're doing the, kind of the undertone for the, some of these areas. We want it darker here, but here I'm just gonna make it a little bit lighter. I'm using what is on my brush, so it's not really, really dark. And I'm going right up. I'm kind of covering the squiggly lines I gave you. And I'm leaving the center area white because we're gonna put white on top. But I do wanna have some undertones of purple. So I'm gonna bring it really lightly to the purple we had the darker purple. See how it's much darker here? In fact, if you want to add some more dark purple, go for it. This is a really pretty shade of purple, especially when you get a few layers. So I add a little bit there. I'm going to add some more up here, but I'm going to show you that her, um, horizontal brush stroke. So I'm going to get some more. One more coat of purple up here. I, I want to see less of the canvas through this purple here. So adding a little more purple up here. And then we're going to bring some of the purple, some strokes into the red. Let me get this a little bit here. Okay, so now I'm going to lightly brush. I don't want to put any extra paint. In fact, I'm going to wipe some of this purple off my brush. See, you can barely see that I have paint on my brush. So we're going to do what is called a dry brush effect. And we're going to start from the purple and just real lightly, we're gonna bring, cause it, it'll look kind of like purple clouds coming over this um, radiating sun. So we're gonna go from the purple right about here and just bring some strokes over. You might be picking up some red. That is fine because the purple and red should be mixing, right? So we're bringing some purple strokes lightly. See how light that is? Bring some of those to cover up. We're just kind of covering up that harsh red line from the red paint. And we just want to blend the purple to make it kind of look like clouds, purpley clouds or coming in. Oh, somebody's got a blender on in the kitchen. So I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna add a little bit more purple here. I'm gonna bring these horizontal strokes. Oh. Hey, uh, yes. my sister wants to show you something. Oh, okay, show me. I painted it. Oh, very good. Good job, Zoe. Perfect. That's exactly what I was saying. 
you're ahead of me. You guys are always speedy. I am a very slow painter. <laughs> All right, so I'm just pulling some more purple. I had a little bit of white canvas along the edge of my red, so that's what I'm trying to cover up here. I want to get that canvas covered up, and I'm just bringing purple across. All right. Is that hard to do? Everybody understand what I'm doing? I wish we were in person so I could come around and show everybody, but we're not. So I'm going to do that on both sides. We're going to bring a little bit of purple, see? A little bit of purple to come over. But I want to go horizontally this direction because that's how the clouds are. The clouds are more horizontal, aren't they? They're not like a big wall of cloud, usually, unless it's a big storm. <laughs> so I'm just bringing some of the purple to cover the edge over here. Like this, just a little bit. Remember, this area is going to be covered up mostly in trees, so we just want to bring the purple over. All righty, I think I'm happy with that. I keep adding a little more purple. If you want to add more purple later um, to your painting or even brighten up your sun some more, you can. All right, let me see here. Let's go ahead and add some purple to the land down here. This should be dry. Um, this little bit of land that sticks out on the right side, I'm going to make that purple. Carefully going around these edges as well as you can with those curves. It's kind of curvy like that. It is going to be, we're going to put a layer of black on top to show shadows. And if you want to keep the trees there, you can leave those white because we'll make those black in a moment. I'm going to bring this shape all the way over. You're not going to see a lot of this purple, but like on the other side, I want to have some purple undertone so you can see some purple still. And then we will have white on top when it's dry for snow. Has anybody gone to the snow lately? I'm hoping to go in a couple of weeks if they still have snow. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so I filled in this area with a coat of purple, all right? I think that's enough. I might even bring a touch more purple right here. And what else? I'm going to put in a little purple between these trees here, really light. I'm just going to use up what's left over on my brush. So we have a lot of purple in this painting, but we want some purple undertones. So we want to be able to see behind what we're painting. We want to see more of that purple. And I still see some canvas through on this side. So I'm going to bring some more brush strokes to cover up the white little spots of canvas. If you have little white spots of canvas, you don't want to cover it up, that's fine. This is your painting. All right, and that's still wet. It's hard to cover up with wet paint on top of wet paint. So if it just keeps pulling up, then let it dry and you can put another coat on later. All right, let's do, 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 do. I think we will go into the black. And we'll use our round brush for the black, okay? This will be creating trees, tree trunks, and shadows. So rinse that purple really well. Don't need to change your water. I know your water's really red, but that's okay. There's more water than red paint in there. So rinse out that purple really well. Oops, I still have some. Get off there. And dry it off. like that. All right, so we can put that flat brush down. We're mostly done with the flat brush. And get your round brush back out. You see that? And I need to move my water. I'm afraid I'm going to knock my water over. Let's get the black. I'm going to cover up my purple so I don't knock it over. 
And we're going to use a little bit of black here. All right. So to start, I think my purple is still kind of wet, but I'm going to just go ahead and um, blotch in like this. See how I'm just kind of blotching? Let me put it up close. I Do you see in the picture on the left, there's a lot of dark behind these white trees, the snow covered area. It's a lot of dark back there because it's shadow. There's not a lot of sun there, especially when the sun's going down, things tend to get dark, right? So I am creating that shadow, that darkness with some black here. And I don't always like to use black for dark areas in painting. I prefer to use like a brown to mix in brown with the colors, but we're just gonna use some black because it makes it a little bit easier. So I'm blotching in this area. Keep an eye on where those trees are. We will create lines with the black. I'll bring this over. I think if I keep it up close to the camera, you can probably see a little better. All right, so I'm going to come in along here. Just I'm using the flat, side of the bristles of my round brush. I'm just blotching it in like that. And then I'm going to create some trees in a moment, some happy little trees. And I'll do my best at a technique that he uses, that Bob Ross uses. He likes to do landscapes, doesn't he? A lot of his paintings are of trees, lakes, mountains. He does a lot of mountain paintings, which I think would be fun, but they're a little bit trickier to show all the, the shadows and the different shapes of the mountains. It's a little bit harder. All right. I get some of the, the black areas here. I'm going to do a little bit over on the other side too. I'm just trying to hold it up close to the camera so you can see. Um, between these trees, I'm going to black, darken that a little bit. Now you remember, you still want to see a little purple in there. So I'm just making a little bit darker with some black, kind of like big fat polka dots. And then on this side, so you've got these two trees here, right? Got these two trees. I'm going to, on the left side of this tree, I'm going to put in a little darkness. Yep, so just kind of blot in that black here. And that's going to come all the way down to our little path. Right alongside this tree, there's a path we're going to stop at. And then the other side, trying not to get my thumb in the purple, the other side, let's go ahead and make some tree branches. Now, um, conifer, the, um, the pine trees that you see here, we're going to put a little bit of purple in a little bit. After we after the black dries, um, the some of these trees don't have leaves because in the winter most leaves fall, right? Except for like pines, um, those type of trees they keep their needles during the winter. Um, so that's why a lot of these are just the branches. So we're painting. Do you see these little pokey branches? Almost looks like grass. We're going to make that black like that. Each one of these, you should have four. If you want to add a few more, you can. I'm making it kind of pointy at the tip, at the end here. Because branches start wide and get narrow at the end, don't they? And then we'll make one here. And try and make a tip, a pointy tip at the end of each of these. And there's one more up here. Oh, can track. There he is. All right. And then this one, I'm just going to bring that down. So they're kind of almost looks like fingers sticking over the canvas, doesn't it? Those are just branches. All right. So we darkened that. We darkened that. Let's, I'm going to put it down now. I'm going to add a little bit of the black to be able to see through, well, past these trees or these little branches. I'm going to put a little dark here. I'm going to blot in dark. In fact, 
I'm going to wipe some of this black off so it's not really, really, really dark. I want to see a lot of purple up here. So lightly, see how light I'm putting in up here? Real lightly, just to show some depth, some shadowing of the trees, but not super, super dark like we did here. Just a little bit. Whatever is on your brush, we kind of call this the dry brush effect as well. And I just want to bring a little bit of black here and maybe a little bit in between these branches because it's going to be when you look through trees there's it's going to be darker as you look further back if there it's a, if it's a real um deep forest you don't see a lot of sunlight in between those trees all right so you can even Paint a few branches here. I'll make a couple branches right here. Some more happy little trees. And that will be starting our little path, our snowy path. All right, let's get some, I'm gonna pull my sleeve up so I don't get paint all over it. So I'm going to go ahead and create the, oops, these two trees that create a V shape. I'm just going to make them all black. All right. And I'm going to start, I'm going to go right up to the top because the picture we're painting doesn't show the top of these trees. I'm going to go from the very top up here. It's hard to see, isn't it? I'm going to start right up the top and follow all the way down. All the way down and it will stop kind of where we stopped with these trees right here. We'll let this black dry. Don't make it super, super thick paint. It'll take longer to dry because we want to put some snow on these trees and give that really cool effect that I have in the picture there. It worked out really well. I thought it looked pretty cool myself. So here's one of the trees that make a V shape. And then the same, let's see, let's see if I can get a good angle. I know the light makes it kind of shiny, too shiny, but can you see that? Okay. And then the other tree is off the edge of the canvas as well. So both of these are long lines all the way down to where this path starts right here. And again, don't make it too, too thick of black paint. It'll take forever to dry and we'll, it'll, you, when we put the snow on the, the white paint for snow, it'll turn and make, make it gray. We don't want gray snow. So I'm going to clean up that edge. So I'm just doing two straight lines. All right. And now let's make some happy little trees. Um, I'm going to do the horizon line. I'm going to do those trees that are in front of our sunset first. So I like to make, well, from watching some of his videos, they, let's start at the top. We're going to kind of go down to the left diagonally. Okay. And then to the right. Okay and to the left, to the right. So we see the edges, we see those edges of those branches, okay? And we're gonna stop at that horizon line where we started the lake. So down, 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 and kind of have fun with this. And these are almost a silhouette, okay? We're not worried about little branches or anything we're just getting that shape in there so you look at it and you see a tree so i'm gonna do that same shape so almost a slight curve to your branch does that make sense you guys able to do that yeah lily <laughs> it's hard to get to that button what the this is how 
Okay. Go ahead and show me, you guys, if you like. Very good. Very good. And if you want to add a little purple later, you can put some more purple. Good, Zoe. Good. Let's see how everyone's doing. Good. Great, Dexter. Oh, let me see both of yours, April and Theo. Nice. Oh, love them. Key and Zach, how are you doing okay? Awesome. Very good. Awesome. You guys are doing wonderful. Okay. Even though I can't be in person to give you more hints, hits, hints and tricks, you are doing wonderful. So we're going to keep doing. Do you see the tree lines I gave you with the pencil? Let's just keep making some more happy trees. So I'm going to do one a little bit shorter. The same style. I start in the top and bring a curve down. Curve to the right, curve to the left. Sounds like a dance. Curve to the right. And we'll, we're, we still want to have see some of that orange and red through these trees, okay? So don't totally fill it in. I see that pretty sunset coming through those trees. So I'm just going left stroke, a right stroke, left, right. And then a shorter tree. So this next tree over is a little shorter. Shoop, shoop, shoop. And again, I'm doing light strokes on some of these so we can see that orange. So don't fill it in too, too much with the black, okay? And then we will be putting a little bit of green in there because this is a colored picture. If it was black and white, I would just leave it black with some white snow but this is colored so we're going to add a little bit of green when this black is dry all right there's three trees the next tree is taller do you see that next tree up here so he's going to come right in front of on our yellow but again we still want to see some of that yellow come through those tree branches okay so i'm going to start here and make a slight curve to the left slight curve to the right making pine trees, some type of pine tree here. Now I know Bob has a technique with a different kind of brush, a fan brush that he uses. And I just bought my first fan brush a few weeks ago. Um, and those are a little more expensive. So your um, round brush is perfect for this. Um, we're just doing short strokes. Yeah. I'm done with those trees. You're done with the trees? All of them? Oh my goodness. See, you are so fast. <laughs> Almost all of them. Almost. I have one more. One more? Okay, good. So I'm doing it real lightly because I want to see that sky behind the trees. So are you able to make a slightly curved line for these trees? And see how you can see through there. Okay, and then there's some short trees. Actually, there's one more here, a medium, medium tall tree here. Make some curved branches here. And then we'll do two short trees. Some of these kind of blend in together. That's okay. So I'm going to make one here. And then the other short little tree next to it. So left, right, left, right, left, right. And actually, these kind of trees are pretty easy. They go really fast. And then we have two more trees over here. So I'm going to start here, go left, right, left, right. Let's see, I'll put it down so the angle's better for you. Left, right. Left, left. All right, there's that tree. And then one more of these shorter trees. And if you have more than what I have or less, that's fine. So I'll make this one here. And you can just see a little bit of sky through those trees, see? All right, 
And then let's make the trees on the right side of the canvas here. How's our time? Okay, we're gonna go over probably about 20 minutes. That's okay. Um, I think I'm going to, okay, with your flat or your round brush, you know what? I think it'll be fun to use your flat brush. Let's get our flat brush out to make this tree. Actually, this tree and the um, whites on these trees, we're gonna use a flat brush and do more of a Bob Ross technique here. We can do this with our flat brush that he uses his fan brush. We'll use the, the edge of our flat brush. Dip it into your black. And we're going to start with kind of a dot at the top of this tree, okay? This tree that you kind of, it makes like a V shape, two skinny branches or skinny trunks. We're gonna start with a dot at the top like that, okay? Start with a dot. And then we're going to, using the edge, of this flat brush, we're going to create branches. And it's more covered in snow, but you're seeing like some leftover leaves and we're just going to dip it in my black again, just a little bit. We're just going to kind of make lines with our flat brush. Can you do that? And we're going kind of, so these, these clumps of branches kind of go straight across like that. We're going to make it a little bit wider. I'm just kind of dabbing on in this shape like that. Okay. Yeah, I think that works really well with your flat brush. And I'm going to wipe. Sometimes I get too much paint on the end there. I'm just going to wipe it off. I have just enough on the very bottom edge on the flat brush. And this one is going to, let's see, we've got some longer branches that come over a little bit more. And we're going to kind of make another line over here. Are you able to make some flatter lines with your flat brush? Probably takes a little bit of practice, but it's a great technique to make trees, these kind of trees. Now, remember, we're going to um, put white on top. And in some places where it does mix into gray, actually will be kind of cool. It make, gives it kind of a shadow effect with the snow. Because even though snow is white, when you have shadows on white, it's kind of gray, isn't it? Did you have a question, Dexter? Go ahead and ask if you like. No? Okay. And I'm just kind of dotting it on like that. Are you able to do that kind of effect? Let me bring it up close so you can see. See? Just using that flat edge of the end of our flat brush. And these branches stop when we get to the trees right next to it. These Branches stop like that, okay? Branches are on these two trees, they're on the higher top half of the tree. We're gonna do the same thing for the next tree that it's kind of um, connected to. I bet they are probably grew together and it's just two branches, two trunks connected at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a dot again. Get down there, dot. And then I'm just gonna start creating some more lines. It's a little bit shorter towards the top than the bottom area. And this tree is shorter, so it's going to have less than the tree next to it. Okay, I might add a few more over here. Maybe a few more over here. You can kind of play with it. And then Let's go ahead and let's rinse that. We don't really need the flat one again until we do the snow. So let's get the purple out of your flat brush. I'm gonna rinse and dry that off quick. 
let's go back to your round brush. I hope it's all clean. And we're going to line this tree. We want to give a tree trunk through here. So if you can see the line, excuse me, if you can see your tree trunk still, let's just bring a line straight down. Not real, real big, because these are skinny little happy trees. And bringing that right down to cover up the white canvas finally. All right, and the same thing for this tree. We'll start at the top where we made that dot. That was kind of our guideline, that dot was. And these skinny trees meet at the very bottom, at the base of the tree, like that, okay? You guys have that okay? All right, and we're gonna do a little more of that blotting effect in between the trees a little bit here, just a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna wipe some of that black off. I've got a lot of black on there. And I'm gonna do it lightly just to look, make it look dark, not like totally filled in. I just want a little darker in between the trees here. Darker there. And then we're gonna do that blotting effect on the right. I need a little bit more paint. So on the right side of the canvas, these trees that are more clumped together, this is a different kind of tree right here. We're gonna kind of blot around here. You should have some pencil lines and you can go right up to those pencil lines here. We don't need to totally fill it in. Again, we wanna see through these branches and see the purple in the background, okay? And know what I, I'm seeing that I kind of love is everybody finding their favorite way, their most comfortable way to paint, whether it's flat down like I am or um, Kian and Zach, and I think even Lily, or you guys are holding it or sitting on an easel. I'm happy to see that. Do what makes it most comfortable and easy for you to paint. No one way to paint is correct. However you do it and accomplish it is the best way for you. So I'm going to kind of dot in these tree branches, kind of the leaves, the foliage of the trees. We're gonna bring down. And again, we're gonna go over a little bit here. If you have to leave, um, remember I will be emailing out the link to the recording for this so you can catch up with the end of it if you need to. All right, these are gonna come in right through here. I'm going to bring start dabbing in black here so these are like some low little bushes that we're going to create a little bit of black I still want to see that purple undertone okay so don't totally fill it in and then we're going to make the tree branches on this in a minute but I want to get the dotting of the black and these little bushes in first real lightly real light so we can still see purple and that's going to go, so kind of at the base of this tree, we're gonna just kind of go along here. And that's kind of our the level we're gonna stop the blotting. And a little bit on the left side here too, because there's more bushes here. It's not just grass next to the lake. This is like the shore, this is the edge of the shore blot in that and again this is kind of where the base of the tree is we're gonna bring the bushes that go kind of right along there on both sides this side as well as the left side right to the edge of the shore here all right now let's get some branches painted in so you can see these lines that i gave you if you didn't cover it up in black we're just going to make like we did these two brand um tree trunks. We're just going to bring in some straight lines with the base being here where we put the black dots. Go up. Another one going up. And if you can't really see your lines, just put about five. There's three. 
and they don't need to be really straight because trees aren't very, very straight, are they? There's four and I'm going to do one more and we'll put some um, snow on top of these in a little bit here. All right, where else do we need some more happy trees? We need to do this one in the front here. So this is kind of actually the middle ground, this tree that is to the right of the two tall trees where I left a space here. If you can see, I can just see the lines to my purple. So I'm going to make a happy tree. He's going to start right here. All right, and we're going to do the same way we did these trees. Swoop to the left, swoop to the right, swoop to the left, right, left, right. I finished the tree that you are doing. What's that? I finished the tree oh, you that finished? you are doing. Oh, I am not surprised. <laughs> You're always one step ahead of me, Lily. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. So I'm going to bring this all the way down to- I am so too. You are too? Oh my goodness, you are so fast. That's awesome. All right, let me get caught up to where you're at. And a lot of your black should be drying. Then we'll put a little bit of green in there. I'm gonna finish this happy little tree. He kinda looks like he's almost um, covering the top of the edge of the shore of this lake. So the branches are going right over the lake. We don't, we won't even see a lot of ground here. All right, um, I'm going to blot in really lightly to have some dark undertones or some shadows under our snow with some purple. So lightly with just whatever black you still have on your brush, let's bring in a little dark and that's gonna create our shore of the lake here. So I'm just kind of, making it a little bit darker. I want to see purple through there still, okay? So bring in some, some more of those polka dot strokes to make some shadows on both sides of our little path. Like so. I think like that, that should be good. And we're going to make the edge of the shore in black with um, right along here, okay? So let's kind of dot, but make the dots connected. Oops, it's right in front of the words there. So I'm just kind of dotting, but making them a connected kind of a dot like that to create the edge of the shore here. The purple in front here is just the reflection of the sky. All right, so we've got that. I think that is all we need with the black now. Got a little bit here. All right, so let's rinse our black off. We're gonna go to our green. So go ahead and get your green out if you haven't already. Cover up my black, whoops. These tops pop right out of my hand sometimes. Teacher? Yes, dear. I have to go to the bathroom. Okay. And we're going to just put a touch of green on these trees that we made, the happy little trees here, these pine trees, not really the long ones, but this one here and the ones along the horizon. We're gonna put just swipes in that same direction that you did with the black to create that tree shape, the branches. We're gonna use just a little bit of that green, that dark green you have. I'm gonna let this one dry because this is the freshest and it's still wet. So the background ones on the horizon line are dry and I'm just gonna put a few, see? Choop, 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 choop. Just that much of the green. There's a good shot. So just that much of green, okay? On each of these trees. And when this one is dry, I'll do that too. I just wanna give a little color to these trees. It kind of warms it up actually. I just put my arm in the black and I got it on my reflection. I'll have to 
erase that. Let me see if I can clean that up quick. If you have a, a your paper towel and a little bit of water it, and the paint is kind of fresh, you can often erase it from your canvas. And pretty much I got rid of that. All right, so let's do some more swooshes in our horizon trees. Just a few strokes. We don't want to totally fill it in. We just want to see a little green pine come through here. Choop. Two more trees left on this side. And then we're going to finish with some snow. All right, this tree is still kind of wet. I'm going to carefully put some of the green on top of that. All right, I think that's all the green we needed there. I'm going to rinse the green off and open our white. Boy, I think I gave you guys a ton of paint. <laughs> Have fun creating some projects with this extra paint. You know what you can even do? I thought I was going to mention. If you need space to make some more project, flip these over and use the back when it's dry, of course. Wait till it's dry. But if you use the back, you have a two sided canvas, huh? If you're inspired by something, feel free to use the back of the canvases from class. All right, let's get some white going and finish up. How late are we? All right. <laughs> Yep, so round brush, because I think this will be a good shape for snow. Yep, you got it, Lily. All right, now be careful. Some of um, some of the black is still wet. Obviously, the green is still going to be a little bit wet. So let's stay away from what's wet. But if it blends a little bit of gray, remember what I said? Gray is still a shadow of snow, so that's okay. So I'm going to start on the left side. I'm going to make some white clumps at the top, like in the painting. If you want to do this way or this way, maybe do both. It makes your clumps of snow different directions. And that's okay. I'm going to, to create the look of the snow on that these two long trunks here. Let's get a good clump of, of snow, white, on our brush. And I'm going to just go kind of diagonal lines. I'm going to create along this trunk, okay? Grab a little more white. And some of it is wet on mine. And it's blending to gray, but that's okay. And just on kind of on the right side of the tree, all right? Because usually if there's a snowstorm, I, I, growing up in Michigan, I lived through many, many snowstorms. And if the snow, snow is blowing to the tree, usually the wind is blowing in one direction, right? So you're going to have more snow on one side of the tree. So get that. Done. Done already. Oh my goodness. You are so fast. So there's my one tree. See, it helps kind of make that tree That's pop, wonderful. doesn't it? I did all of mine. Oh my goodness, Lily, you are so fast. So I'm going to do the same thing. So more on the right side of this trunk. I still want to see the dark on the left side. And I'm just kind of making sort of diagonal marks with the white. Kind of just blotting it as I go, but a little bit diagonal. But you want to see more of a white line, OK? Like in the picture, in the painting. And that's coming all the way down to the bottom. Add a little more bright white here. And if it mixes a little bit, then go back over to after it's dry, go back over and add some bright white to the top of some of the gray where it mixed. So it has that nice, bright, white, fresh snow look. All right, I'm going to do a light, light line on the left side. I don't want to cover up the black because we still want to see that tree trunk, right? So I'm going to carefully, hopefully not to get paint all over my arm. I'm going to draw a light line on the left side of both of these tree trunks, real light. 
I hope you can see this. And if it's not a continuous line, just do a like, it can be kind of a broken up line. You just wanna see, this is like light shining on this side of the trunk. Real light, faint white line all the way down to the base where we started the tree. I'll do both of them and I'll hold it up for you to see. And it just kind of defines that tree trunk, trunk a little bit more. Even if it's not a full straight line, it's just kind of um, a broken line. All right, like that. That kind of defines the tree, doesn't it? It makes it look like two tree trunks. And we're going to add some, let's do the same for the, the two trees here. And then we're just gonna add snow, add our snowstorm. <laughs> so let's make the tree trunk. So I'm making a line on the left on this tree and see how it's a little bit thicker and thinner. So it's not a straight, even line. I'm just kind of making it thicker and thinner as I go along the left side of this trunk. Just get a little snow on the trunk there and it's gonna go right to the base. And there's actually, I'm gonna make more snow at the bottom of the base like that. And we'll do the same thing for this. Start at the very top and just lightly, gently put some white along the left side of this tree trunk. And then it can get wider at the bottom with more white. Let me hold it up so you can see. See, that makes those branches or those tree trunks pop out, doesn't it? I'm gonna add a little bit of line to the um, five branches that we made here. One, two, that will help define this tree. Whoops, ran out of white. And bring that all the way down. Just kind of stops in the back here. And this one, and one more branch. So we've got five thin light lines, just enough white to see that that's a tree back there. Okay. And um, I just done. You're done. Did you remember the very last thing? If you're all done and you're happy with your snow, remember what we covered up up here? Those two little birds. Shall we do that quick? I will continue painting so it's recorded for anybody that watches the um, recording. But let's not forget, I already covered it up. When I make tree uh, trees, oh my gosh. When I make birds, I like to, when I make birds flying, I like to make kind of a hump and I'm gonna practice and show you on my paper towel. I like to do this. It almost looks like an M. So it's like two humps. That's how I like to make my birds flying. So we're gonna do one a little bit smaller than the other. So it looks a little bit further away than the other. And it's right up here is where I, if you can still see them, I can barely see them. <laughs> I covered it up. So I'm gonna do it. And you can kind of put it wherever if it's covered up. I have a, two humps here, like, let me put it up close, like that. And then one more with a little bit longer wing, so it looks like it's closer to us. Yes, yes, you got it. Good job. And I'll make my other one right here. All right, and I'm just gonna finish doing my snow. My birds, guys... so I, I lost my birds, so oh. I had to make my own. <laughs> I, I lost my birds too, Lily. <laughs> All right, let me put it up close so you can see. I think I put more than I, I think I put more birds. You Thank can put you. more birds if you want. Bye. You're welcome. Thanks for Thank coming. You. If you girls want to stay on, I'm just going to finish my snow. If you want, if, if you guys have to leave, feel free. But I'm just going to continue recording here. Really?
And so I'm gonna just make some of those branches. Well, the snow clumps, kind of like what we did on these two trees over here. I'm just gonna do that same effect with the white on these two trees. And I want it more blotchy than like straight lines. So I'm just gonna kind of dot it like that. I think will look better, a little more realistic. And um, it just gives the effect of foliage or like branches and clumpy leaves with snow on the top. And again, if it mixes with some of that wet black, more power to you. It looks even better. In fact, if you when the wet, the, when the white is wet, say that ten times fast. When the white is wet, then um, you can even add in a little bit of black to mix with the white to make gray. Are you all done, Kian? Did you finish? Are you still working on your snow too? Nice. Oh, you do have snow. Good job. How's your brother? Is he still working on his? Oh, nice. Oh, look at it. It looks like it's a snowstorm, huh? <laughs> it's snowing. Very nice. Good job. You guys did so well. It's, I feel it's easier for me to teach in person. So it's a lot harder to get some, some instruction across through the camera. But you guys have done such a wonderful job. Makes me so proud. So I'm just going to continue making my snow. If you guys have to hop off um, Zoom, go ahead. I'm going to um, finish up so anybody watching the recording can see the whole thing, okay? I'm just kind of dotting in my branches with the white. Like so. And then we have to make our path. Make sure you make your path white. Are you leaving? All right, you can go. I'm just gonna finish. I could be here all day painting snow on trees. <laughs> all right, take care boys. You did a good job today, you guys. Let's see, I'm gonna add a little bit up here because there's some snow covered trees in the background. We can't really see the trees, but I'm assuming the trees are there because that's how Bob taught me to paint them. I'm going to blot in some snow here. Like that. And I'm going to now, I'm going to blot in some snow kind of behind these four branches that stick out from the left side of the canvas. And this is kind of our, I think, I, I think it's probably sky in the back, but right about here is where our snow covered path starts. So that's where I am blotting in lots of white. Make that white snowy path. And it's kind of uneven because snow kind of falls unevenly. And it's probably, um, if there's a hill or bumps, there's lumps in the ground that the snow is going to create bumps. So that's why it's kind of a curvy edged path. In fact, we can even make it where it comes over. You know, it might can kind of come to a point if you want. where the snow was kind of filling in and little crevices here, little crevices there, kind of like that. Is that kind of what you're making? All right, just me and you girls. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I might even, I think I'm gonna put a little bit of a line on these 
four branches that stick out from the left side just to kind of make those pop. And they don't really have any foliage, just the branches. And then where else do I want to add a little snow? I'm going to add a little bit of snow. Real light though. I'm going to wipe some of that off my brush. And on the pine trees here, um, I'm just going to add a little bit in the diagonal shapes that we did those. I'm just going to add a little bit. in that diagonal shape we did to show snow covered branches. And the same for these. We don't have to have a lot here because because the horizon line, these trees along the horizon are further away. So we're going to see less details, less more clumps of snow and just um, white that we know is snow. Did you girls get finished up? Are you happy with it? I want to see your final results here. Not that happy with it, but. No, oh no, let me see. I, I'm okay with Hold it. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, Theo's the artist. Oh now. my gosh. That is beautiful. Oh my gosh. I need to put the birds. I'm okay. used to do digital art. That's why I don't really draw on canvases. Yeah. Can, well, even canvas boards are different than even just painting on an actual canvas. But um, but canvas boards are actually a very economical thing to paint on too. And they store better because they're so thin, they store. I have, oh my gosh, so many of my 11 by 14 canvases that are like half inch to a mm. thick. We're gonna call them unmuted. What? Wait, are you guys unmuted? Yeah. Is he gonna show me something? So, come here. What? Whatever. Nobody cares. Sit where you sit. You don't know if it. You sit where you sit. You don't know if it. Oh, I just finished up and I think it's really good. My birds aren't that oh, good. Yeah. But... Oh, oh well. wait, I'm going to add a little bit more snow because um, I feel like I want to. I'm actually going to add more at the base of these trees. I kind of. Yeah, but that's going to. I'm adding more snow to the base of the trees. And then bring your snow over. Make sure you put snow on top of the black here. And then we want a kind of a slightly defined line of snow along the shore here. So just kind of dot along on top of that black. And then you can do it kind of in um, groups. So a group of snow here, group of snow here. We don't want to totally cover up the black though to um, have shadows underneath that snow. So I'm just kind of going like that where you still see that path in white. I'm going to bring some snow over here that do the same thing in kind of clumps. And then the black and the purple kind of create your shadows. I'm done. I think. Yeah, I'm done. And you know, one thing you'll learn with painting, um, you already do some digital stuff, but at some point you can keep fixing and fixing and fixing your artwork. But you at some point you have to say, okay, it's done. You gotta call it done. <laughs> and that's hard for me often. But when you start, if, if you take it too long you might just kind of mess it up more the more you work on it. So know when to call it done. <laughs> Bring a little more clumps of snow over by this tree. And then what I didn't get to show them because they all finished quick, I'm going to create a horizon line with snow here because we want to show that the lake stops over here. There's another shore here. But I need, might need to put more white. I technically already did that, but I'm going to put more white. Okay. Yeah, I need to finish my snow on the trees. 
but this just kind of helps carry when you make the um, horizon line more visible it helps carry your eye across the canvas um And be sure to take pictures of your artwork for your um, teacher. Yeah. You get credit. You get credit for that. And then also what they didn't let me show the other kids. <laughs> I'm going to wipe some of my white off. And I'm bringing some snow, kind of like the purple clouds that we brought across. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Wow. Good job. I'm just going to bring a little bit of white over. Real, real thin but I want it to kind of look like the purpley clouds that are coming over the, um, the radiating sun. You can kind of play with this afterwards if you want. You don't have to do this, but that's kind of the effect. I think I even added water. If you want to thin out your um, paint, more adding more water to a little area. And then like, if you want to use, feel free to use the caps. I know you. this is your first paint class with us. If you want to use these caps as a mini palette to um, either mix or add some water. So if you thin out your white, it makes it really um, translucent and it looks really cool. And that's kind of what I did with the act, the painting of this picture. You can see a little bit of white coming through there. And I'm just going to bring it real lightly across. So it looks like some clouds. And these are going crazy watchdog these are um going with that same direction that same horizontal direction we did with the purple and then as well as down here i think you already did it though i'm gonna bring in some white here as well as some thin thin horizontal lines in our lake to give the direction of um reflecting those lines we did up above in the sky because the water always reflects from the sky, right? That was probably a little bit too thick, but that's okay. So kind of like that. And I'm going to bring that. Oh, I'm going to actually make a line. Oh, I got to add snow here. And then I want to, I'd like you to put a line below the black line here. That gives another nice um, edge of a shore. So let me get snow in on this section. And then if you want to hop off, I'll continue finishing up here for anyone that watches the recording. <clears throat> Bring some white horizontal lines here. And the, the white in the water in the lake can actually be carried right across the yellow and orange. So it looks like there might be clumps of snow floating if this lake froze in this winter snowstorm. Um, you are done. You're done? Calling yeah. it done. Good job. One big step in painting is knowing when to stop. <laughs> it's often hard. and finish my I still have snow to add so if you guys are done feel free to hop off did yeah, you well, like guys, it what did you think of the class it was it was great was it good I wish I could do more oh I love it you guys oh okay so who is who so this is me I'm April I'm Tio. April okay so April has longer hair Tio has shorter hair okay yes. <laughs> that helps April long, April long. I don't know how I'm going to remember that. I will try. I will try next time. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for painting and joining us. I'm so glad it worked out. And um, I think we'll, I should have your, um, I'm going to check with your mom and um, see if your teacher got the submission in for March for next month. And the school will pay for it. It's super awesome. Um, and we're going to do Monet. So um, have your mom check her email that I sent out last night. And it has a picture of the Monet painting we will paint next time. And actually, kids will be ready next week. So um, I will touch base with your mom 
about the kits and um, or with the teacher, make sure they she got that certificate. So I'll get that in the email. And so check the email out. It's a pretty picture. It's going to be really pretty. Monet. I did a similar one with my um, adult group like a year and a half ago. It's been a while, but um, it'll be fun. Pretty colors. So and I with a drawing class, actually, if you didn't, you'll see um, in the drawing class, I usually talk about the artists and I get lots of good information about the artist to go over. And then we just spend the painting class, just painting. So you can learn some about um, the artist when we do the drawing class. So I'll just go ahead and keep finishing my snow here. So if you're all done, you guys can hop off. Thank you for joining. I'm so glad it worked out for you guys. Me we'll too. see you next week for drawing class, okay? Okay, bye. 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 All right, just finishing up here. I'm all alone now, that's okay. Oh, that's cool. Riley. 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 Is he in here? Turn it over, I can't see. <laughs> Go to the left. You're you're right. Oh, interesting. That's cool. Oh, there's like a butterfly. Oh, that's really cool. Sweet. How long you been waiting for that? Not long. I got oh. t-shirts from them in like two weeks probably. I feel like it was two weeks. Maybe <laughs> it was not two weeks before I got this one. I'm still waiting on the t-shirts. Oh wow. First and I was like, <laughs> oh, my t-shirts. I was all excited when I got the email. This is early. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I'm assuming that they had more t-shirt orders than blanket orders in these birds and put out or something. Yeah, maybe. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. You're so cute. Oh, little baby. So cute. We have another little baby. Don't feel bad about your tool. I don't know. I need to see if I can take a nap before work, but I don't know if I will be. I'm still recording. Oh, you're recording? Oh, God. But I don't think anyone's going to watch because they all finished. The little kids were done before me, okay. before I even got to everything. So I'm just going to finish up some snow. If anybody is watching the recording, I think we had everybody in class, though. So I'm just going to finish up here and just in case anyone wants to watch some trees in the distance. Finishing this tree. I'm just doing lighter, lighter dots because these are further away. Like that. And I might even draw a little bit of a line to give the illusion of a tree trunk. I did that in my first painting of this. Just a couple of the trees. I won't see a lot of tree trunk, especially in the distance. I'm just going to give a little illusion of a tree trunk. I think it kind of helps ground the trees so they're kind of not just floating on this little horizon line. And then over on this side, I'm going to add a little bit of snow to these trees. And we're going to do the same effect that I did there. I'm going to add a little bit more snow, I think, on these branches. I'm just kind of going over top of where I put the black. And make just one more layer of white but really thin. Bring a little more here. I think I'm, I'm kind of actually filling in between a little bit, just a little bit. So there's a little less space in between here. And then I'm gonna fill in between these branches a little bit with really, thin paint. I don't want it too bright. 
And then we're just going to finish off with this direction. I'm going to kind of make it these clumps kind of going this way. This one I kind of went this direction. These ones I'm going to do a little more horizontally, but in clumps, because this is a different kind of tree with snow on it. I think this is going way over. Oh, it is. That's OK. Longer class, but fun painting. I really like this painting. I can even make a little reflection on the birds. Tiny white line. Happy trees, happy birds. And any more snow over here? Maybe a little bit here. Make it thin along the black edge. I still want that black edge because that's the edge of the shore and it's actually the shadowed area of the grass or whatever is along the shore. And so I want to keep that dark. But I want a soft edge because snow is soft. I'm going to create that soft edge like that. And I'm going to soften up this edge as well. And I think we'll be done. All right. Maybe a little bit of snow here to lighten up the dark. And this area between the trees. And this is just some snow covered trees in the background that we can't really see any details on. I just want to make it a little bit snowy. That's kind of all I did on my painting that you're looking at. Okay. I, I think I can call it done. Like I was telling the girls, sometimes you just have to be done and quit messing with it, or you just end <laughs> up messing it up. So get some more of this snow reflecting on their water. I think I'm happy with that. I think this was a fun one. I enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for attending class. And if you're watching the recording, thanks for watching the recording. I'll catch y'all later. See you next time. Thank you.